ready to take off podcast and ain't ready done. To this is how I'm gonna give it to him. Look. Yeah. 30 in the 40, bitches, real life, this ain't Call of Duty. Okay. Flash ice in the test, this gun look like it came straight out of the movie. This shit ain't for show. Try your hand, I bet you fucking lose it. It's your boy Jimbo underscore K U T Z 910 at extra underscore. And I have a special guest in the building, Miss Juicy Ma. Juicy, how you doing? Yo, I'm feeling good. I'm having a great day. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Look, I know we had a little mix up. We finally end up getting an interview together. So I appreciate your time and I appreciate you pulling up. And uh, let's get straight into it. 144K views on Flip That Switch Freestyle. Yikes. Yes. Yeah, man. Um, I'm just blessed. That's all I can say. Um, I actually recorded that track two years ago. Um, it was my first video, like music video, period. Um, it was actually the day before I got out of the military. I used to be in the military. I'm a veteran, so... Um, yeah, that was like, I know this is what I want to do. I mean, I've been doing music since I was a kid, basically. But um, I would just go, like, to the studio in between work hours. But then once I got, like, all the time, like, now, having the luxury of being retired, um, I'm taking it serious. So that was just me, like, ah, let me shoot a video. Let me see if the people like me. I shot it. It did well, and it climbed a little bit. Um, but I was just thinking, like, okay. Why is it not doing well? Like, I, I love this song, you know what I'm saying? But that's how I had to get into the business and learn about marketing and learn about pushing the song. And that you can't just make a track and put it out there and think it's going to work for itself. Like, you got to do the work. But I don't know what happened. One day, um, I was coming back from a trip from Atlanta. And I was checking my YouTube, and I noticed that it was almost going to hit 10K. And I only had, like, a 1,000 views on YouTube for the longest, like, a whole year straight. And I'm like, what in the world happened? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm lit. So I'm like, yeah, I make my post. Like, dang, y'all. I was getting kind of weary, but here we are. It's going up. It's that time. Right. And then when it started shooting up, like, by each 10,000 views, like, I would post, okay, 10, 20, 30. Like, I'm like, wow, 40, 50. Uh, this is crazy. I was just like, wow, I don't know what this means, to be honest. <laughs> right now, I'm still like... <clears throat> I'm still getting the kinks of the business, to be honest, you know what I'm saying? And I encourage other artists to find out, like, where your beat is coming from. If you're, getting, if you're not getting custom made, like, make sure you own the rights to it. Make sure you have your stuff all the way together, your BMI, your copyrights, and all these things. Because Yikes is um, Nicki Minaj's song, for the people that does not that do not know. Um, she is one of my rap inspirations um, in the industry. And, um, yeah, I just I love her music. I love her style. I love the rap. So I was like, let me do a stab at her be um and yeah that's all it was so look usually when people come on i be the one asking all the questions i love the energy right now because right. you're talking to me and you right. giving me everything that i really need so like yeah that's very good so um you said it was kind of like your little side thing you was full-time in the military right um when do you say you first started actually rapping to begin with um I don't know exactly, you know. I just know by the time I was 10 or 11 years old, you know, I'm full blown making raps. It wasn't really making too much sense. I mean, just the stuff I like, like literally Skittles. I remember some line that I came up with, like Skittles. It's kind of like the kid Patron. Never had liquor a day in my life. Not even really knowing what I'm saying. I'm just seeing the adults in my life loving this Patron item. So I'm like, well, I like Skittles. I like candy. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, let me tell y'all how the kids get down. And then just as I grew, it changed with what I like and what I like to listen to, you know? So, so yeah. look, you 10 and 11 and you rap about Skittles and Patron? Yes, um, really it came from like watching my older cousin and my older brother. Um, my family kind of did music around me growing up. And yeah, I was like, man, let me in, let me in the booth. I want to make a song. Did you, a did you spit that, uh, that verse to any of the adults? And what did they say about it? Adults? Um, yeah, and I was an adult too. Like, well, I guess I didn't. Spit it's like, let me run this out of mine. Let me run. No, it wasn't like that. Um, I did rap it to my older sister, just like on FaceTime one day after work. Just like, hey, listen to this. She would always listen to my rhymes or whatever. She was the first person that really knew I could rap. And like, I wasn't even rapping to her. We was just listening to like T Grizzly's first day out. And I'm rapping it word for word, energy, giving everything. And she's just cutting down like, you can rap? Like, how do you know this song? Because you're doing this, but it's coming out a little different. Yeah, I kind of like the rap. 
So I talked to her on FaceTime and um, I rapped it to her and she was just like, uh, it's all right, you know what I'm saying? Not saying that she wasn't feeling it, it's just like, you know, when you don't hear yourself after it's all together, you're just rap rapping over a beat, it's like, you're not gonna catch the things like the ad-libs and the little things that make it pop. Yeah. Really the magic that the engineer makes, you know, in the studio. So after hearing it, for the everybody heard it for the first time, basically, um, I got home, so everybody was hyped for me, for me being home. Once I'm home, I was gone for like two years. Get home, and I'm like, oh, I got something for y'all, I got something for y'all, you know what I'm saying? Boom, drop the video. Everybody is just like, whoa, like, that was a lot to take in. Like, okay, one, you're rapping. Two, this is what you're rapping about. It's good, it's fucking explicit. It closes off damn near, you know, I gotta deal with every male figure in my life. <laughs> like, okay. Okay, I can support your dreams, but I don't know if I can. Yeah, watch like, your what, video. what was their response to seeing some of uh, your music videos, some of the male adults in your life? I mean, like some of my older cousins and my older brothers, they just basically said, like, I know sex sells, but I can share it, I can't watch it. You know what I'm saying? Or some things they just, I can't share. Okay, this is hard bars, but you're taking it too far. I just like it and pretend that it's somebody else when you're saying it. But nah, they, they understand that it's a bigger vision to it, so. Um, I, I guess, you know, any male that cares about any female in their life would feel some type of way at some extent. And yeah, like, oh, that's my little cousin. I want to see that exactly. shit. Exactly. But now, now that we're two years later and it's doing what it's, it's hey, keep doing it. Keep pushing. Whatever you're doing, keep it up. I'm like, right. Exactly. That's what I was telling you. I just sit back and chill and I got you. So, look, take me back to the beginning. How was uh, life growing up? Can you describe some, like, your earliest memories? Can you... Throw it back to maybe elementary school and how was how was you as a kid? Um, okay, so I was let me start here. I was born at Cape Fear, right? I'm from Fayetteville, born and raised. But okay, two I six did, baby. Right, right. But I did spend a little bit of my life in Sampson County, right? So I came here for good, like I'm um, in the fourth grade. And the first place I went was um Alger B. Wilkins. It was an elementary school before it was an alternative high school. And um, I was one of the kids that went there, <laughs> uh, whatever that means. And um, yeah, I don't really remember too much about elementary school except for like the fifth grade. I went to um, William H. Owen on Ramsey Street and my teacher, that was his first class. My class was his first class. He was the one that inspired me um, to get into speaking publicly, like doing civic oration, doing spelling bee. Um, I got on the step team in the fifth grade. I just explored a lot of different things that I might have interest in. And it kind of stuck. I really stuck with those things throughout middle school, throughout high school. And then, as you can see, it travels into your own personal interest as an adult. And I just think, like, my love for words and my love for speaking has a lot to do with um, the fact that I rap for real, for real at this point. And I feel like the big stigma about being young and, and I guess you could say chasing a rap career, what they like to say, um, it's BS. I feel like I'm a great spokesperson for that because I am young. I'm 23 years old um, and I'm retired. You know what I'm saying? So I build a foundation first and then here I am chasing my real dream, rapping. Not saying that you couldn't chase your dream rapping first, but make sure you do always have something to fall back on. Just, just for the naysayers. Just, let, me, let me stop you right there real quick. You're talking about being retired at the age of 23. That is crazy. Right. Yeah. So um, I know you say you joined into the military. You want to describe when you went into the military, how that uh, time span went, and then how you came to being retired at such a young age? Um. Yeah, sure. So um, I did some ROTC growing up um, all through our high school, but I did Air Force. You know what I'm saying? I went to the Army. I did initially planned to go into the Air Force, actually Air Force Reserve. But um, I went to like a certain part of town and their recruitment office moved way across town. And to be honest, I just didn't want to drive across town. So I talked to the Army recruiter and then I became an active duty soldier in the Army. <laughs> what a huge change, let me throw that out there. But um, I could have went when I was about 17 years old because I uh, graduated high school when I was 17 years old, but my mom was, kind of afraid for me you know what I'm saying and I already had a sibling in the military and she was telling me you gotta be a strong mind I'm not saying you know you're not strong minded I just don't know you know you don't know until you're there and I can totally agree with that and um yeah um the military experience describe it like if you can I know I, I mean I can I can explain it um so like yeah basically I didn't go in 
then because my mom was like a little cautious like like you said so i try to work life out here it won't hit no shit to be mm -hmm. honest i wasn't making enough i wasn't able to take care of myself um so when i was 19 after i had enough bills that just said fuck it i can't do this like <laughs> something else has to change i went into the military at 19 years old and um it's about like what you make it you know what i'm saying that experience is different for everybody um you definitely have to put your pride aside. You have to put a lot of your base values aside and allow them to break you down and build you up. And um, just like there's risk with everything you do in life, it's just a huge known risk of, you know, the sacrifice of your life. And once you get that in your mind, that, okay, what if I wake up and do my job and, you know, my life would be over and I'm okay with that, you can do the military. If you have a problem with that at any point, I don't recommend it. And that's just the truth. The experience is... It depends on your job. <laughs> it depends on uh, what leadership you fall under. But to be honest, it, it molds you. It, it gives you like, uh, I hate to say military words, but I'm gonna say discipline. Um, because I feel like the stuff that I learned in the service, it helps you out here in real life. You know what I'm saying? You learn it in different places, college, or on a sports team or whatever the case may be. But it just shows you basically unity is the key to getting through most things. So, now you say you retired at 23. Was that like, did you get out medical uh, disability or did you just do your three or four years and was like, okay, this ain't for me, something I don't want to do? Right. So, I'm 23 years old right now, but um, I retired when I was 21. And um, it was a medical retirement. And yeah, that's all I'm going to say about it because. I ain't about to mess up your disability, baby. You yeah. got it. But it's not even messing it up. It's just like I like to keep certain things separate. And I feel like once people know certain things about you, they like to, um, I don't know, sometimes manipulate or try to use it against you. But um, one day, you know, my story will be told in its entirety mm -hmm. uh, at the time that that's right. But nah, I mean, just a little, you know, you, your parents put a little bandage over your little boo-boo. That's what we're going to say. And um, I'm going to leave it at that. So you got a lot of support from your homegirls. When I watch your music videos, right. you be about four or five chicks are like y'all turked up having a ball. Yes. Are those like high school friends? It's at the third. Like, give me a little um, bit about that too, so and uh, uh, the concept for your videos too. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna start with flip the switch, right? Um, flip the switch. To be honest, um, one no. Um, I always had like video shoot casting calls. I try to post or I try to like make it known that I'm having a video and just extend it to the community, um, whatever area I'm in. This is, I'm in Fayetteville right now. So all the recent things that people have seen that's basically taking place in Fayetteville or surrounding areas, but Flip the Switch was shot in Tennessee. I was last stationed at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. So um, I just basically let my battle buddies know, which is just your partners at work. Um, Hey, I'm having a video shoot. I'm getting out of the military. Everybody pull up. It was going to be way bigger than what it was. But um, COVID just started. So I only had to let one person in. So I actually have myself in the video, um, my two blood cousins, and um, my best friend in the military. And there was one girl that I didn't know. And she was the one in the red. But now um, I consider her a friend. And she's an awesome, dope video vixen. Um, and yeah, we met that day. And it was straight off vibes. It's kind of a funny story. Um, she had her outfit on. And originally she had like uh, the red bandana pants that go with her whole outfit. And in the video, you notice she doesn't have pants on. It's just like uh, the bikini bottoms. And I told her at the door, like everybody else had to get sent home because of COVID. I said, if you take your pants off, then you're in the video. <laughs> and she took her pants off right at the door. And that's how I was like, yeah, this shit finna be lit. And that's how that happened. Um, my last recent video, um, which was a freestyle to the fuck nigga free uh freestyle by glow really shout out to her yeah shout out big glow <laughs> okay big glow y'all know what the hell about <laughs> y'all know the fuck going on um i did a collab with a couple of artists here um local in the city and um yeah basically it's all about networking um we shared a lot of time in the same spaces studio working in different places and um yeah it was popular everybody was down you ready to hop on this everybody working sitting around the table um, chilling, kicking it, and wrote um, my verses to the song. Got together, had a studio session. Okay, everybody put their money in, had a video shoot, met the location. And that can happen with 
anybody else who's interested um just hit me up that's just as easy as i make it because i feel like you shouldn't be hard to reach you know what i'm saying some people try to be hard to reach or they try to be hollywood hollywood that's the word not hollywood you know what i'm saying i'm not too big for anything and this is home so if you got a dream and i got a dream and we trying to get to the same place and we ain't there yet but we put our you know our two pieces together and um Make a bigger piece. Yeah, cause I initially approached you on Instagram, right. and I told you, hey, I want to do an interview with right. you. You hit me back, timely fashion. We chopped it up. You wasn't rude about anything. Right. It was like, yeah, we can get together and get it set up and get an interview knocked out. And I was like, dang, okay, she's making a lot of noise, but she still seems to be humble. So right. shout out to you for that one. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, try to remain humble. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes people can take your kindness for weakness and. I, you know, we all experience it, but I just learned that, you know, take a step back, you know, and reevaluate the situation and try not to think too hard into it. Who's Make sure that? you keep your platforms for what they're supposed to be used for, uh, promotion, marketing, um, showcasing your brand, showcasing your talent, whatever that is, and try to just keep all the personal stuff separate. Um, if you notice somebody just became a new hater, hey, congratulations <laughs> to you. Like, I hope I have three one by next week and um if you're a part of that then um join the team and also there's a bigger team that supports so you just have to remember who's there with real genuine love and support and, and who's you know everybody has a job to do so now juicy it seems like you have a lot of insight on the game a lot of marketing a lot of a lot of knowledge that even older cats maybe in their 30s really don't know did you research this stuff on your own or did somebody tell you these things how did you gain the knowledge that you have about the industry that you're going into um, or that you're currently in basically i mean Bless sorry y'all excuse me i didn't i'm not gonna say i didn't research i've done research but i didn't thoroughly research um basically i learned better like by trying and making mistakes i learned better you always learn quicker and easier when you start losing money you know what i'm saying so it's a lot of money behind music before the fame way before the fame so once i started noticing like people asking me questions such as um, um do you have a bmi do you have a you know do you own your copyrights do you have an llc you know all these questions i'm like it's ringing bells like nah this was just a hobby at first it was just something i grew up on something i was good at I didn't take it serious until I had the time. You know what I'm saying? So, no. Um, there are some people here and there who drop gems and I pick their brains. Um, I had a few tracks recorded in the Red Room. Shout out to Barry Williams. He dropped a lot of gems um, on me and I learned a lot of things from him. He's actually the first person to teach me how to write my first industry song ever. Let's Before, go. I was just, uh, <laughs> just making rhymes. Basically, what it boils down to, but then taught me how to do the structure you know how to set it up and with the different things you know how it's supposed to sound how it's supposed to look you know what i'm saying so no but i don't want to say no because that sounds so bad i really do plan on doing more research but as of now not nah, just self-taught you know graced by the people around you that want to bless you with the knowledge that they know and I do encourage that you share the knowledge to the people that want to learn and that are willing. I say and break your neck and hey you need to do this. They come to you, why not? You know? Right. Rub elbow, share information. But um no. And just watch other people's mistake, like, wow, that didn't go well or oh wow, they they're getting fucked over. Like, nah, I don't want that to be me. So word of mouth. So since you're starting to make uh make noise or whatever, you're gaining attention. If a record label presented you a record deal, would you take a record deal at this point or would you rather continue to grind independently? Um, so keep in mind, you know, I was in the military under contract, so I'm not going to be one of those artists that labels or whoever can come to with, uh, well, I have a deal for you, okay? I'm not against the deal, but let me take a look at it and let my lawyer take a look at it and we're gonna see if you're trying to fuck me on the back end and that's not gonna happen like the numbers need to match up it needs to make sense if i'm putting in you know it is your craft it is your work it is coming out of you know you you have to know what your worth is so 
I don't know. Um, right now, it's I'm on the independent grind for sure, and I stand behind independence and independent artists very, very much so. <laughs> so it's safe to say if the the numbers is right, right, you're not getting the 360 or getting kind of screwed in the right, end, right. that you would go that route. But right now, you're sticking with the independent grind. Correct. All right. Um, can I get five of your musical influences? Um, I know Nikki is one. <laughs> oh, in the industry. Yeah, yeah. All the way. Okay. Um, shout out to J. Cole. Um, he's definitely one of them. Um, I'm not going to tell you that, oh, I can name out every J. Cole song right now, but that's not the case, but I have my favorites. You know what I'm saying? Right. But we are from the same city, Fayetteville, North Carolina, and I just respect the grind. Um, some people feel how they feel. I don't feel anyway, other than you open the door and you came from the same place that I did, and that just made it real in my mind it makes it reachable believable and um on another note i would have to say shout out to Murray too um our fresh new superstar out of the bill um i've encountered with him a, a few times and he had his encouraging words and you know thank you for that but it's gonna have to be nikki j cole Murray, and then the other two artists um megan the stallion <laughs> i know this sounds might be a little generic but nah seriously Megan Thee Stallion showed me that I could be myself, you know, because it's not really fully accepting to rap how I rap or how she raps or dance how we dance and be revealing, you know what I'm saying? I hope to aspire to the, the level that she's on. Um, now, look, I try to stay away from controversy, but I'm going to ask you this. If you don't want to answer, it's cool. Mm -hmm. Now, she, I mean, clearly kind of lied on Tori. We not, I mean, we not boycotting Meg at this point for lying. We just going to let it ride. Um... I we can look. right. I have no comments because that I have you know my own goals and I just mind my business. Right, that's her business. That's their business. I'm not going to agree or disagree with it um, because I don't know about that situation to be honest. And I'm just now getting that news with that. You know what I'm saying? But all I can say is, look, they both richer than me, <laughs> and I ain't got no room to be speaking all day. Day T. I you got know? you. So, but okay, the last and final influence would be, would have to be, um, it's like tug of war for me right now. Like, uh, mm, I don't know. I kind of like a mix of everyone. Uh, uh, I'm going to go with, um, Lizzo. Because they try their hardest to cancel that woman, and it ain't gonna work. And that's definitely the energy that's coming behind. Me. I did not it expect you work. to say uh, Lizzo. It's not gonna work. And, and and then you know, as that you know what I'm saying, people wouldn't expect me. But you know what? I stand behind that woman. You know because she stands behind me and every other woman in this world and whatever you know struggle they're facing. So shout out to her. Shout out to confidence. Shout out to standing up for you when nobody else will. You know so what, what makes you a big Lizzo fan? Her confidence, number one. Um, going just to, watching, just going watching. Going to the Laker games with her ass out. Huh? Going to the Laker games with her ass out. Hey, all that she type don't shit. give a fuck. <laughs> and hey, hey, yes, yes. Not saying we should be that careless or whatever. Be cautious of, you know, the children and everybody's concerns or whatever. But what's, if it's not wrong for Megan to do it, right? Then why should it be wrong for Lizzo? Then why should it be wrong for Lizzo to do it? And just as simple as that. If we gonna keep shit, you know, equal kosher all the way across the board, then keep it kosher. No double standard. And that's mm -hmm. just how I'm coming. So. so my last question to you. If you had one artist all time that you could work with, who would it be? Nicki Minaj. We going Nicki? Yes, for sure. I mean, nah. Uh her songs was the first songs that I were rapping that's, I mean, I guess you could say like mine, um, to my mom. And it wasn't like too bad. She was just like staring at me, kind of like, is she crazy? <laughs> you know? <laughs> but nah, she also knew like, nah, she got it. Like, she got it. If it wasn't for my mom, I would have never posted Flip the Switch on YouTube, period. Not saying that. You know, she didn't know about the song specifically. She just said, you need to post your music on YouTube. Shout People are mom. going viral from YouTube, you know. 
you know, people are getting sound from YouTube. So I'm like, all right, mom, like, okay. Me out of uh, everybody else, like, who, whatever. I'll, I'll take a stab at it. We'll see what happens. But nah, like, damn, mom. Look, look you know what now. I'm saying? Like, you see yeah, something. Shout, shout out to mom. I'm going to keep going just for that. And as long as I can, and as long as I can, I'm going to do it. So, um, where do you see yourself in the next two to three years musically? Musically, in two to three years. Well, um, I'm tied to 24 this year, so I'm going to go with the larger number, three, meaning about 27 years old. I um, definitely see myself farther in the industry um, and more known. More known. I plan to be a household name. I don't, I'm not sure if that will happen in three years, but hey, never say never. You know what I'm saying? So I just plan to see myself further in the industry and more known. Definitely can happen. So. Juicy Ma, I appreciate your time. Before we get out of here, is there any shout outs you want to give? Um, Your homegirl's in the car. I know you better give them a shout out. Actually, my cousin's in the car. Shout out my to him. Die, the uh, girl you seen to the left of me and flipped the switch with her fro. Um, this is the first time we've linked up in a while, and that's my road dog. She do everything juicy, straight up number one team juicy. Uh, she's currently pregnant right now, so we're excited about that. But I got her out the house, hey. and yeah, she is in the car. So shout out to Koya, real one. Uh, since diapers, baby, shout out to my family. Shout out to my mother, you know what I'm saying? Um... Shout out to the gang. Um, and just shout out the guy, you know, for keeping me straight up. Uh, mental health is real, you know. Check on your strong friends. Check on your weak friends, for sure. I mean, people love the scream, check on your strong friends. But the weak ones ain't doing too well either. Like, let's put the pride down and let's uh, lift each other up. So, that's where I'm at with it. Um, you can definitely follow me on all social media platforms. What's that YouTube. IG handle? IG handle. She is dot juicy because she is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but she is dot juicy on Instagram. You can also follow me on TikTok at she is dot juicy. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel at Juicy Ma. Um, if you're on Facebook, you can type in Juicy Ma uh, pound sign Team Juicy, and my uh, fan page should pop up. Um, if you're more of a personal behind the scenes type of person, you can follow my personal Facebook page um, at Hallie JM and that just stands for Hallie Juicy Ma. Hallie is my real name. There's a gym. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm on Snapchat at she is dot juicy as well. So you're going to find me in two, two, one or two ways. She is dot juicy or juicy Ma. So one or the other you can find me. So yeah, follow me, subscribe. Stay tuned. I got a lot of stuff dropping. I got a video coming in the next couple of days. And I got a video shooting too. So, yeah, we working all that summer. That girl out here working, man. <laughs> Ayo. We working all summer. Hey, shout out to Ready to Take Off Podcast. Y'all know what the fuck going on. They got Juicy in the motherfucking building. Whole lot of 2-6 love. Y'all know what it is. <laughs> Damn, she ended it better than I can. <laughs> Juicy sure. Bye. Appreciate it. Y'all know what's up.